Drugs, smoking and alcohol are all things we know are bad for us, but why is it that when it comes to gambling, we turn a blind eye? In this age of technological advancements, gambling companies can be accessed by anyone, anywhere, at any time, and it begs the question, has it become too easy to lose everything? Gambling has been around for centuries, but the recent rise of online gambling has made it impossible to ignore. There's something for everyone. You've got slot machines, video poker, video bingo, sports betting, scratch cards, the lottery, roulette, stock markets, pachinko, kino, mahjong, bridge, basset, lance cornet, pique, put, team patty, the razzle, hanky panky, heads and tails, two up, three card monte, shell game, backgammon, liar's dice. In fact, the number of people addicted to gambling or in danger of addiction has risen to more than 2.3 million since 2015. So what does a modern day gambler look like? It could be anyone, even a young uni student such as Anna Carvalho, an undergrad studying at the University of Sheffield who turned to online gambling as a means of subsidising her income. My name is Anna, I study at the University of Sheffield. I'm originally from Portugal and uh, I survive off of my gambling money. I started gambling around last year, December. I started because it's really hard to be at uni and have a job and actually have some money for yourself because there's so much that we need to pay. I actually have to gamble to survive. We do this thing called match betting. One of my friends, he walked into the room and was like, hey guys, have you heard of match betting? This is how we make money. I was like, oh, this is not secure, this is not safe. Until I actually saw on websites like Save the Student with them. I was like, well, if they're saying that it's good, why not? Save the Student is a website designed to get life hacks to young people who may need quick cash or lifestyle tips when living away from home. Owen Burek is the founder of this site. We reached out to Mr Burek and asked if he was concerned that promoting gambling to young people could result in addiction and poverty in later life. He said that matched betting is not gambling and that they have had no reports of gambling problems. I feel like I would be a bit scared of getting addicted, but I'm not a person that usually gets addicted to stuff, but I've seen some of my friends getting addicted to it and gambling every day and actually go onto the casino and stuff and actually risk their money. Mm -hmm. Technology has made it so easy to become addicted to gambling that the estimated number of adults deemed to be problem gamblers has grown by a third in three years. That means that around 430,000 people suffer from a serious habit. So, what makes this type of gambling so appealing to us? Lazarus Ganidis, a psychology lecturer based in Kent, explains the psychology of gambling and the impact of its glamorization in the media. Hi, my name is uh, Lazarus Gonidis. I'm a lecturer in uh, neuropsychology here at the University of Kent. People might get hooked because they think it's fun to start with. Lots of people do it to socialize, uh, especially at the university setting. Uh, and obviously lots of people do it because they think they're going to win money. If I'm needing money quite a lot, I do it like at least three times a week because on a 20 pound bet, we can earn about 15 quid. So if I do a few of those, you know, it's enough for me to go on for the week. I would like to get a secure job, but even if I did, I wouldn't have time to do it properly. Studying and working at the same time is difficult. Friends of mine at uni send pictures of their feet online to make money and that's insane for someone that just wants to go and buy like food for the week. It's easy to spend like 20, 30 quid 
and that's a lot for someone that earns like six pound an hour. Ah, I've got a quid! When it comes to match betting, the problem is certain practices can work as gateway to more severe practices. So even though it says it's kind of risk-free, the, the element of addiction is stronger. Looking uh, specifically in student gambling, I would say young people are more susceptible to addiction. They are uh, much less protected than older uh, populations. If you think about online gambling, I don't see how they can impose that limit. I would say it's practically impossible. So, how can we regulate this? Tracy Crouch, an MP based in Kent, wanted to impose a new legislation that changed the maximum bet on fixed odds betting terminals from £100 down to £2 in an attempt to try and minimise the danger that problem gamblers may find themselves in. She resigned from her position as Sports Minister for Chatham and Aylsham after the legislation was delayed. When asked why she resigned, she said, from the time of the announcement to reduce stakes and its implementation, over £1.6 billion will be lost on these machines. In addition, two people will tragically take their lives every day due to gambling-related problems and for that reason, as much as any other, I believe this delay is unjustifiable. We have a responsibility of protecting those who are starting and may not have the skills to control themselves and how much they spend. With new ways of gambling coming out every year, the sport is becoming impossible to regulate. Are our children paying the price? As soon as you think you tackled one, then there is a new one coming out of nowhere, like microtransactions, and we get kids spending hundreds of pounds, uh, and there's still nothing about you know, protecting kids and their families. They made it very accessible, very easy to use. You touch a button and then you spend 20 pounds. Definitely something that we need to address and very fast. Gambling stay alive actually has affected my mental health. It's kind of degrading to say about yourself like, oh, I gamble because I need to eat. And, you know, that sucks. I feel a bit like just worthless, really, because I'm like, I want to get a job. I want to be stable. It makes me feel terrible about myself. What history has shown really is when there is economic turbulence, people always increase their gambling activity. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if the same thing is happening now. I would say gambling has devastated consequences regarding your background, but uh, lower income classes are kind of hit more, uh, mainly because they attach it to a purpose of hope. Of, you know, that's my, my way out. But there are also people trying to help. Organisations such as Gamble Aware and Gamcare offer free, confidential advice both in person and over the phone. If this isn't your thing, there are also groups such as Gamblers Anonymous and the Gordon Moody Association that offer alternative forms of help. People should be aware of the dangers uh, in advance. For example, there are lots of gamblers out there that they don't know they can ask different providers to lock them out. There is lots of good things being done. 